Welcome to worship for Sunday, August 16th. We welcome you. Um, the announcements and prayers have been updated and are with your link for your service. And be sure to have your elements for communion. We are pleased to be able to serve our community by allowing a large space for social distancing and everything for uh, a blood drive uh, August 20th and the drive hours will be 10 to 315 and we will need to set up the room and contact Ken if you'd like to be uh, helping with that and if you'd like to give blood you need to contact uh, the people that are doing it and the information is in your announcements. We are very grateful for your generosity and your faithful giving and we'd like to you to keep it up. <laughs> we encourage you to give as you are able to. Uh, we're falling behind a little bit but we are continuing to pay our staff and um, our bills are a little lower than they normally would be. Again, thank you. David has been diagnosed with mononucleosis, which accounts for his fatigue. We will be taking a couple of weeks off the week after next, and so we can have a significant break. And we will have a list of options for various services that you can um, plug into or watch um, after the fact and so enjoy the different options. There will be more details about that later. Uh, next week we'll be doing the service as usual. I want to thank Bob Conover for the sermon this week. Uh, which comes from an Easter service that he did, well, it's the second Sunday of Easter and done in the Easter season. And I would like to thank Jill Duffield for most of our liturgy today and, and the prayers. This is our call to worship from Psalm 67, 1 through 7. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere the Lord. And join me in our opening prayer. God of signs and wonders, you have revealed to us that Jesus Christ is your Son and our Savior. Strengthen our faith that we may have life in Christ's name. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. And this is the lesson uh, prescribed by the lectionary to be read this year on the second Sunday of Easter. Easter is a season of seven weeks. We often think of Easter as just the single day, Easter Sunday. But Easter is a seven-week-long season, which ends at the day of Pentecost. So this is our lesson from the lectionary for the second Sunday of Easter. And the setting is that it begins on the first Easter Sunday, and then it continues, picks up a week later, which would be, for us now, the second Sunday of Easter. Many of you will know this passage as the story of Doubting Thomas, which I think in many ways is an unfortunate way to to label or to title this passage. Before I begin, I want to mention one thing that it would be irresponsible of me not to mention it. In the very first verse, in verse 19, it will mention that the disciples were locked in a room for fear of the Jews. Now, it would take a whole sermon to unpack that phrase, fear of the Jews. But let me just say it it is highly problematic for us in today's world. It holds a very different meaning for us today than it may have in in the first or early second century when when this gospel was written. And so I encourage you just to uh, set that aside and uh, some other time perhaps we can delve into it. But again, as I say, it would be irresponsible for me not to mention it as it really is highly problematic for us in our world today. So let us now hear our reading, John 20, 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his sides. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written 
so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Good morning. Happy second Sunday of Easter. So it is good to, to be with all of you. So we heard the lesson earlier, the story of the so-called Doubting Thomas. And in the very beginning, we see all the disciples are gathered there in a room. The door is locked. In other words, those disciples were not practicing social distancing. Now, we clearly are in a time for just about five weeks now in the North Bay counties and all the Bay Area counties. We have been in social distancing and in uh, sheltering in place. And it's something we need to practice, of course. The disciples may not have been practicing social distancing, but they do teach us that we always, as people of faith and as a human community, need to practice social engagement, social connection. We may be separated by, at the very least, six feet from each other these days, but nevertheless, we need to be socially connected. This is a story of resurrection faith. How do we experience, how do we encounter resurrection? Sometimes it's individually, but most often it is through that connection with one another. We can't go more than about 10 minutes these days without hearing the word virus, coronavirus. And we know that in general, viruses are something we want to steer, steer clear of, especially at this time. But you know, faith is a lot like a virus. You have to be near it. You have to be around it in order to catch it. Faith is something to be shared. So as we go about our time in these uh, challenging days, make sure that you are staying engaged, connected with other people of faith. Because it's, it is not hard to wonder, it is not hard to lose faith. Certainly our faith is challenged. So stay connected and catch the faith of others. So that's the first thing we see. The disciples were not practicing social distance as we are, but they do show us to stay socially engaged, socially connected. Stay close with your family and friends. Stay close to your community of faith. It will strengthen your faith. So that's the first thing we see. The second thing we see is focused on the so-called Doubting Thomas. Now, I don't know about all of you, but I am a charter member of the Doubting Thomas fan club. Some of us come to faith quite easily. In fact, you know, faith is a gift. And for some of us, we have received an abundance of that gift. And for others of us, not so much. Believing is challenging. So there's good news here. So faith as a gift. Think of gifts in other ways. Now, some of us have a, a real gift for music. But, you know, others of us, that gift is not so much. But all of us can sing. Some of us may even sing off-key, but all of us can sing. So in that way, we're all blessed. Now notice, Jesus appeared, 
How? We don't know. Out of nowhere, walking through doors that were closed. And he appeared to those disciples on that first Sunday evening, on that resurrection day evening. Thomas wasn't there. Thomas said, hey, unless I see it for myself, I'm not going to believe. We can be pretty sure that Thomas was a Presbyterian. Presbyterians want to see it. Very reasonable, rational people. If it's hard to believe, we'd like to have a little proof. So Thomas said, you know, unless I see. Now notice this. We can be a little hard on, on doubting Thomas. And if you're feeling a little bit doubting Thomas, like, here's the good news. Jesus showed up a week later, especially for Thomas. Jesus didn't leave Thomas out because of his doubt. Jesus made a special trip because of his doubt. So if you're members of that Doubting Thomas fan club, know that you are held in good stead. If Jesus showed up for Thomas, Jesus will show up for you. Now, Jesus did say, you know, blessed are those who believe but haven't seen. Well, of course. Blessed are those who can play the piano and sing on key. Of course. But all of us can sing. And Jesus will show up for all of us. He showed up for Thomas. He'll show up for you. And even, maybe, for me. So, social connection. Realizing that Jesus, that God's very self, God's very presence, will show up for you even though you may hold doubt deeply? And third, what about this Jesus walking through these closed doors? What do we make of that? How might that shed some light on our life of faith? I want to invite you to a practice. And I'll outline it here, but then on your own, in the quiet of your own home, I invite you to practice it. And this is something I learned long ago, maybe 30 years ago, and have practiced it many times myself in very ways, various ways. So here's the practice. Find a comfortable place to sit and be quiet for just a a few minutes. And then close your eyes and begin to imagine a room that is a comfortable place in your life. It could be your living room, your family room, it could be your office. You could even be outside. Or you can create your own room, create the, the perfect room, the, the perfect garden that you'd like to have for your own. And just sit there for a brief time and, and notice the room. And then notice Jesus. Just appearing in the room, he comes into the room somehow. But notice Jesus just appearing in the room and sitting there across from you. Maybe. Maybe he comes and sits right next to you. What's he look like? How does he sit? What's the expression on his face? Just imagine. And what does he say to you? What do you say to him? 
Is there anything you want to ask him? Is there anything you long to hear from him? What does he say? What's his response? And did you notice? that he showed up just for you? And then let him leave. Until the next time you need a visit from a close friend. You remember the song. What a friend we have in Jesus. You know, I think it's gonna be some time before uh, we are shaking hands with each other again. Dr. Fauci says, no more shaking hands. So maybe the best way to close this time together is simply bring our palms together at our heart the way we've been taught in other traditions and say, in the name of the living God, I bow to you. May God's blessing rest upon you now and always.
prayer. Good and gracious God, so many of your people are hurting. There seems no end in sight to the uncertainty and pain of this season. Parents and caregivers are worried about children's well-being as the school year starts and the pandemic persists. Those living in, care, in group care facilities yearn to be able to have visitors again and the loneliness of those already isolated grows. The economic fallout from this virus gets deeper and wider as many scramble to find work, to put food on the table. It feels at times as if we call out to you and you do not respond. Like the Canaanite woman, we shout for mercy, but we receive no help. Yet she kept calling out to you, kept following you, refused to be turned away, turned away until you healed her daughter. We call out to you now, Lord Christ, have mercy on us. Hear our cries, help us. We call out for mercy for those on the front lines of fighting for justice. We call out for mercy for those on the front lines of fighting this pandemic. We call out for mercy for those grieving the death of loved ones. We call out for mercy for the sick and those who tend them. We call out for mercy for the scared and those who comfort them. We call out for mercy for those without food or housing, medical care or community. We call out for mercy on behalf of those who do not have the strength to raise their own voices. We call out for mercy for ourselves, trusting you know our deepest needs, even if we do not have the wisdom to name them. Help us, hear us, Lord, help us, heal us, Lord. When we fear you have walked away from us in our desperation, send your Holy Spirit to remind us yet again that God does not reject God's people, that the call and gifts of God are irrevocable. Embed in us the biblical stories that teach us that even that which we intend for evil, you, Lord God, use for good. Grant us the faith of the Canaanite woman so that we will persist in advocating for the vulnerable and hurting no matter how long it takes for our world to be made well. Give us faith, Almighty God, to keep focused on our Savior, following the way, loving you and our neighbors, until the one we worship comes again, and come again he will. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Welcome to Communion. As we gather at our Lord's table, we've gathered our elements and we trust you have yours. And together through the medium of video and YouTube, we all take communion together, signifying how we are one body in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, come unto me all you who are weary and I will give you rest.
And um, those of us who are a bit weary and needing rest and healing say, yes, Lord Jesus. <laughs> so let us come to our Lord's table and uh, eat and drink and be fed by our Lord. Let us pray. Holy One, we come expecting your feast. Mm. And we expect to be filled with the Spirit, to be strengthened, to have our cares lifted. We pray that you would bless this food to our bodies. In the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and after breaking it, he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of salvation given for you. For as often as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. These are God's gifts for you and us, God's people. Let us eat. The body of Christ broken for you. The bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. The body of Christ and the cup of salvation given for you. Let us pray. Lord, as you broke the bread and, and shared the wine at that last supper with your disciples, this meal continues to feed us, to fill us, to strengthen and encourage us, May we go out being your hands and your feet in a world that needs your love every day. Amen. Now hear the benediction and the charge. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak, help the suffering. Honor all people, love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you and keep you. May God cause the divine light to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God turn toward you and grant you peace. Amen.